The West African state of the Gambia has announced its withdrawing from the Commonwealth, apparently without giving any notice of its intentions. State television branded it a neo-colonial institution, a reference to the organization's roots in the British Empire. Let's hear more about this from the World's Newsroom. We can take you to Anne-Marie Tomczak, who's been looking at this for us. What's the feeling there, Anne-Marie? Lucy, welcome to the World's Newsroom. I'm here on the fifth floor. Now, this is where the African services work. And I've been speaking to many of our colleagues today from Commonwealth countries and uh, further afield as well. And we've got lots of reaction. I'm going to speak to some of those colleagues right now. Issa Williams um, is from BBC World Service and Zenaida from BBC Africa, who's from Mozambique. Um, Iso, what's all of this about? Well, it's uh, another reassertment of the president of Gambia, Yaya Jame's um, right to uh, boost his sovereignty, I guess, in the eyes of the international community. The um, Commonwealth is seen as a, as a relic of the colonial era by his supporters and himself. And um, he thinks this latest move is one but of many moves to kind of extricate the Gambia from what he sees as a colonial legacy. Colonial legacy, let's stay with that point because he's making this point about this colonialism. But there are some members of the Commonwealth who don't have any connection to that colonial history. Mozambique being one of them as a recent joiner, well, re recent in that it joined in 1995. Zenaida, um, what does it mean to be uh, in the Commonwealth as someone from Mozambique? Uh, I think it means to be part of the globalised world, to be part of a big group. Um, we joined the Commonwealth in 1995, like you said. It was just three years after we had signed our peace deals. Mozambique was in the process of building a new, uh, peaceful and stable country. And being as part of the Commonwealth uh, provided uh, the platform uh, to get the condiments uh, to, to feel, fulfill that objective. So what kind of benefits are there? Do, do you feel it's a positive thing? Well, uh, as a Mozambican citizen, the first benefit I would see was the scholarships. Every year, as part of the Commonwealth, uh, Mozambicans get uh, uh, to benefit from scholarships. They can go to Australia, they can go to India, they can you come to the to UK, to universities to do their masters. Um, in the current uh, environment, uh, I think we are all aware of the fact that Mozambique has just discovered a new oil and gas reserves. The, a Commonwealth Business Council in particular is very helpful in terms of uh, getting investment to the country and as well as getting, I mean, uh, being able to share expertise on how Mozambique can better benefit from its oil and gas reserves. Iso, lots of reaction to this on social media from people in the Gambia itself, but also in other countries. Indeed, and um, I can almost bet you that those reactions are going to be split right down the middle. You're going to have a, a, a huge amount of people ferociously for it and a huge amount of people ferociously, ferociously against it. Um, but then again, it, it, you know, it's one of the things where if you ask, I know when I spoke to people on the ground in the Gambia under conditions of anonymity, if you ask them, what has the Commonwealth done for you lately? They're going to be hard-pressed to give you one answer. So I guess the president is tapping into that sentiment. Um, we should also remember that a few months back, there was a huge rally in the capital, Banjul, against the European Union. Uh, and part of the chance were that the Gambia will not be colonized a second time again. So my colleague from Mozambique, you know, although they are quite keen to join, there are people also in the Gambia who say, look, the Gambia has been a part of the Commonwealth since 1965, incidentally, the same year that Singapore joined. and besides the CFTC, which is the Commonwealth Fund for Technical Cooperation, in which, of course, you know, judges are trained, teachers, the scholarship fund you referred to comes from, and things of that nature, they see it in the Gambia as another avenue for Britain to meddle in a sort of quasi-colonial fashion, and up with that the government won't put. I've been looking at some of the comments and I'm really struck by how strongly people feel about this, so much so that I wasn't even sure I could read some of these comments out on air. Yes, and, and it's, again, as I say, you know, you're going to have people strongly for it and strongly against it. Those who believe it's a good move things, think that, um, absolutely, you know, it's about time. This couldn't happen soon enough. And those, for example, the vice president, the former vice president who's here in London, who we are going to be uh, 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 interviewing on our programme Focus in Africa this afternoon, little plug there, well, um, we'll, we'll did say... make sure to tune into that, Iso. I'm going to exactly. have to stop you there sure. because we've just run out of time. Thank you very much for being with us in World's News. Zenaida, thank, thank you also. And we'll have lots more on those social media comments too. Do, do join us for World's Newsroom later on this afternoon too. Back to um, you in the studio. Thanks so much, Anne-Marie. I was looking at those uh, Facebook comments earlier. There's lots of different opinion there, so it's well worth logging on.